Hi, this is Rod Faulkner, and you are listening to the SeventhMatrix.com Eye on Sci Fi Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 183 of the SeventhMatrix.com Eye on Sci Fi Podcast. The podcast where we share with you terrific indie, science fiction, and fantasy, online short films, web series, and other closely related media. We also, on occasion, share with you conversations with talented creators who are producing outstanding indie speculative work. Thank you for joining me. And in this episode, I am very pleased to share with you our conversation with writer and director Spencer Zimmerman. Spencer joins us on the podcast to talk about his new short film, the sci-fi drama Dark Side. Dark Side tells the story of astronaut Sam Bowman, whose family has been rocked by an unthinkable tragedy. In the midst of this, Sam is assigned to go on an interstellar mission to rescue the ill-fated crew of an earlier expedition. Sam agrees, but it comes at a great personal and emotional cost. Spencer joins us to talk about the production of the short film, which faced extraordinary challenges, including beginning filming in March of 2020, just as the world began to face the COVID-19 pandemic. Because of the pandemic, delays in filming lasted 720 days. But a silver lining is that Spencer says that the delays ultimately helped the production of the film. He also discusses the very personal inspiration behind the story of Dark Side. So, without further ado, please enjoy the Eye on Sci-Fi podcast conversation with Spencer Zimmerman, the writer and director of the sci-fi short film, Dark Side. Spencer, welcome to Eye on Sci-Fi podcast. We have you on the podcast to discuss your new sci-fi short film, Dark Side. Please share what Dark Side is about. Hi, Rod. Thanks so much for having me. Dark Side is a sci-fi short about astronaut Sam Bowman, who, in the wake of a personal tragedy, accepts a mission to go on an interstellar voyage to save a lost crew from certain doom. But what he finds out along his way is that no matter how hard and how far you run, you cannot outrun your grief. What was the inspiration for Dark Side? So the inspiration for this movie is always kind of tricky to nail down because it kind of came from a lot of places all at once. I was going into my third year of film school when I wrote this. And so I realized that we were in this incredible facility with all of this equipment and all of these resources. And at the same time, there was like this nexus of creative people surrounding me. And I really wanted to try and make a project that made use of all of that stuff and all of those people and everybody's incredibly creative talents. And I figured that there was no better way to do that than to make a space epic uh, short film. A tad ambitious, but I think it, it all turned out. And at the same time, I was uh, I was going through an interesting period of my life where on one hand, I had just lost my grandmother and I I was watching my, my grandpa my grandpa deal with this grief after I think over 50 years of marriage at that point and just seeing somebody lose somebody who they knew for so long and not being able to respond to it and and not and questioning their faith and, and just completely wrecking this person was it was a really, really powerful and moving experience. And that same summer, I met somebody who I felt like I could be in love with for the rest of my life. And I was just experiencing all of these emotions at the same time. And I, I felt like there was some kind of like connectedness between it all. And so that was, I guess, kind of the inspiration for trying to find this connection between love and life and death and and regeneration and uh, trying to package it all into a big uh, sci-fi spectacle. Spencer, Dark Side looks amazing. And when I was watching the film, a few movies came to mind, including 2001, A Space Odyssey, and more recently, Gravity and Interstellar. So I'm curious, who are your filmmaking influences and what movies inspired the aesthetic of Dark Side? Yeah, so obviously 2001's a big one. I think 
I don't think anybody can make a space film of any kind without owing some kind of debt to Stanley Kubrick. What he did was amazing for, for the time he was in. And it stands up even today as probably the best space film ever made. It, it really is the standard for that genre of movie. So the, uh, the influences are obvious and I don't think there's any way around them. I don't think if you, if you tried to work around them, you'd be, you'd be kidding yourself because it, it, he just, he, he nailed it on the first try. It was not really fair for anybody else, but Gravity, Interstellar, those are obviously big ones too and some of the more popular ones. But some other movies that kind of came about that really helped kind of develop the the specific visual style of this movie was one was a small indie film out of Seattle a few years ago called Prospect, which has this incredibly detailed and complex world that these guys, uh, Zeke and Chris, had been building for, I think they started with a short film and then it turned into a feature film. And they had been building this world out for years. And you can tell it's all on screen. It's this incredibly deep, complex world that feels like it has a really, really rich history. So I wanted to try and take part of that in, and bring that into our world and make it seem like a world that was used and that had purpose and that had been around for a while in some ways. And on the other end of things, a movie that was a really big inspiration and not so much in terms of the genre, just in terms of the filmmaking style was Krzysztof Kozlowski's Three Colors Blue. That movie is one of the movies that I saw really, really early on as a teenager that kind of inspired me to make films um, and to try new things and to have a unique voice. And so just the way that he deals with grief and the powerful emotion and and finds a way to connect it all with 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 music and sound and light and and visuals, it's really unlike anyone else. So that's another big inspiration on this film, at least. I read on the film's official website that there were quite a few challenges during the production of Dark Side. And I can only imagine, given that we are in a pandemic, elaborate on what were some of the main challenges that you faced and how did you and your team overcome them? Oh, boy, where do I even begin? It might even be easier to talk about what went right, because <laughs> there were so many things that went wrong obviously like just not even considering the world that we live in and, and the pandemic and all of that it was already a challenging movie to begin with we were talking about creating physical sets physical effects miniatures we wanted to try and do everything as in camera as possible to create a, a world that felt tactile and felt real so we were already setting ourselves up with a kind of bigger task than usual a lot of i think people's normal response would be to would be to try and do green screen on a low budget like this and you can build out the world that way um, but we really wanted to have things that we could interact with and felt tactile and felt lived in and the only way that we could do that was to build them for real doing this on a student budget uh, however has its drawbacks and that's where our brilliant production designer rain lemay came in as well as our costume designers tabany and alex they were really able to build out an incredible world with l almost nothing like rain was he was building sets out of literally garbage. We were going to the dump and like pulling like use dishwashers and fridges and random pieces of junk and, and couches and cushions and, and, and nailing them to the flat walls and pulling wires out of things. It was literally just like like a scrapyard hall and, and taping it in an interesting way that maybe made sense. And maybe all of that junk and, and used nature and oil and grease and, and, and gack made it into the movie and made it feel a little bit more real ultimately. Um, so it was a lot of kind of creative problem solving in terms of like, okay, we have a deer carcass that needs to be eaten. How do we actually pull that off? And it's basically it's well, what do you see? I had to be very, very specific in what I was showing and what I was not showing so that rain could know exactly how much effort he needed to build. If we we're only going to see one side of a model, well, he doesn't need to decorate the other side. So we only focused on the one side. If we're only seeing one end of a deer carcass. We only need to put half a fur coat on your carcass made of, of chicken wire so that we can create the effect convincingly and not have to waste a bunch of time and money putting together the rest of it. And that was just the beginning. Probably the biggest challenge came in actually shooting the thing logistically, just trying to drive up. I think we had over 50 people on set at our biggest day, driving them all the way up to this location. It was about half an hour north from our school. So we had to cart all the gear, all the people, and we didn't have an opportunity to go back and forth. So we had to make sure we had the you know usual movie making things like you know catering and craft services and like all of that, which was for us unheard of at the time because we had never done anything of this scale or of this type 
not to mention, obviously, COVID-19 happened. So our very first day of shooting was Friday the 13th, March 2020, which is kind of an incredibly cursed day looking back in retrospect. We were really superstitious going into it. We thought it would probably be our hardest day. It was on on location. It had the most shots out of any day. I think more shots in one day than the other two next two days of filming had combined. There were so many things that could have gone wrong. It was all weather dependent. If it rained, we were screwed because there's not supposed to be water on this planet. And it was, you know, it's the middle of the rainy season in Vancouver. So obviously the chances were huge. If it was too sunny, it wouldn't work because it's supposed to be a storm. So it had to be the exact right kind of weather. And ultimately, it all went off without a hitch. It was about as perfect as a day could possibly go. Everybody really, really planned their asses off and and had everything covered. And we got every single shot that I had wanted by the end of the day. Not like a minute to spare. We were out of the location at exactly 5 p.m. The gates were closing behind us. It was crazy. And what we thought would be our hardest day turned out to actually be our easiest day. It was the next two days, which were the real challenging ones because we came to set and things weren't built. So on the next day so we had to find something else to shoot and we're moving things around and then all of a sudden we hear about this COVID-19 thing that I hadn't even been paying attention to because I was so deep in the prep of the movie and then before you know it we are being shut down because this virus is taking over the world and we're told yeah yeah we'll we'll be back in like two or three days we just have to iron this out a week at tops and as everybody knows obviously that was not the case we were two and a half days into a four day shoot when we were shut down and we were put on a hiatus for the next six months, which was really, really disheartening initially. But in retrospect, it was actually an incredible opportunity because we had this time to look at the footage we had shot, put it together into a rough cut and kind of see how we were doing and assess where the story was at. And boy, was it in trouble. <laughs> we, we really... Uh, Uh, not that we missed the mark, but it was like really eye opening to see, okay, so this is what we have. And I feel like I really need to rework some of this. So I spent that six months rewriting the script. And then when we were finally allowed back in the studio with, we went from like a 50 person crew to an eight person crew. We, you know, I was able to kind of shoot with this new script in mind and these new plans in mind. And, And then we went back to edit. And that same thing actually happened over and over again, because our, our deadline for submitting the project kind of got pushed. And so we kind of just had this open season to to shoot and to edit for a little bit and shoot and edit for a little bit. And it was like this really, really lovely way of making a movie where we didn't really have to be concerned about getting it all in at once and then editing it all at once and hitting a deadline. It was just kind of like this creative sandbox where we could try things out, play around, see if it worked and then come back to it. I mean, that process kind of repeated on and on for about nine months until we were finally like, OK, we have to lock this thing down. And that's the movie you see today. So, you know, it, it was a huge challenge and I think everybody handled it incredibly well. But ultimately, what COVID presented to us was an opportunity to really fine tune the movie and, and make the best possible film we could have made. In sci-fi, space travel can seem as easy as getting on a cruise ship and taking an excursion. But in reality, it is very dangerous. And I appreciate how your film doesn't shy away from that reality. Why was that important for you to make sure that that was at the forefront of your movie? So again, it all tied back to trying to create a world that felt real and felt lived in and like it could plausibly exist like it wasn't just a a sci-fi utopia or that we're living hundreds and hundreds of years in the future where space travel is just figured out i I wanted it to feel like something that you could actually experience it and and to make this world to make this world feel real would make hopefully these characters feel real and their experiences uh, more resonant with an audience so it was important to try and make a mission that was not only plausible and and kind of somewhat achievable, but that would also follow a real flight path and would have real consequences and stakes to to f- fucking up or to making mistakes or to you know you know miscalculating the amount of fuel you would need or to to make a, a irrational decision to go somewhere. Real space travel will have real limits and real parameters, and so there will be real decisions that have to get made that will be inherently dramatic and and difficult for the people making them. And I think it's foolish to try and shy away from that in favor of convenience. I think it's it's better by far to to work with that constraint and to try and make something that could feel like a real a real dilemma that somebody could actually face than to try and just pretend that it's it's not part of the plot because it really is. And 
yeah, what I found when we leaned into that was the choices were much more dramatic and the things that he had to do were had much bigger stakes because he couldn't screw up and, and just kind of turn on his, his, his warp speed uh, drive and, and fly back to Earth. He had to make decisions. And, and if he made the wrong decision, it would have a lasting impact. I admit at the end of Dark Side, I wanted more. And that is because it can truly be described as cinematic due to its dazzling visual effects and its human drama at its center that is powerful and affecting. Are there any plans to pursue maybe developing the film into a full-length feature? First, thank you so much for that. It, it means a lot to me that the film is making an impact on people. And to answer your question, yeah, I would love to develop this into either a feature or possibly even a limited series, I think. It has a real potential. The producer and editor of the film, Braden Van Grudel, and I, uh, we've been kind of talking and throwing ideas back and forth about how we would create a uh, an exploration of the original Genesis 1 mission and kind of dive into the crew and what went wrong and what was the interplay of, of the people in, on that ship, the five or six people, and, and what kind of went wrong with them that had them meet their fates and their demise. It's still pretty early on in, in the in the creation process, but I would absolutely love to do a feature length version of this. At the same time, I'm working with a production company in Vancouver here to develop something based on some IP that they have that's kind of a very, very similar world of deep space exploration, a little bit more into kind of the creature sci-fi realm, not so much just humanity anymore, but still very, very much in the vein of what Darkseid is. And so that would also be an incredible thing to do if that um, happens to go through. Fingers crossed that either of those possibilities open up. I've This is kind of my first foray into sci-fi filmmaking, and it was a real, real delight to get to play around in, in a genre like this. Spencer, where can our listeners go to not only watch Dark Side, but also find out more about its production and keep tabs on your future projects? So Dark Side is available to watch for free right now on the Dust YouTube channel. So go to watchdust.com or the Dust YouTube channel. You can find it there and you can watch it as well on Clippist starting on March 5th. To follow the film on Instagram is at underscore dark side film underscore. Um, that has information on the film festivals it's playing at, as well as some links to some interviews and other things that we've done. If you want more information on the film, you can go to www.darksidefilm.space and where we have information on the film, behind the scenes photos, behind the scenes docs, visual effects breakdowns, and some bios of our cast and crew as well. And if you're interested in following me, keeping up with what I'm up to, I am at Spencer underscore Zim on Instagram. You can give me a follow. I'm pretty easy to reach out to. I'd love to chat to anybody about filmmaking or anything related to watching movies. Spencer, I just want to thank you again for agreeing to come on I Am Sci-Fi Podcast. I really enjoyed it. And I will leave a link in the show notes of this episode to where our listeners can go to watch Dark Side and learn more about its production. And I wish you all the best with the film. Well, thank you so much, Rod. It has been an absolute pleasure to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for helping promote Dark Side, and I hope I get an opportunity to be back on the podcast again soon. And there you have it, the Eye on Sci-Fi podcast conversation with Spencer Zimmerman, the writer and director of the sci-fi short film, Dark Side. A link to where you can watch Dark Side and also to where you can learn more about the film will be included in the show notes of your podcast aggregator, or you may visit the seventhmatrix.com and you will be taken directly to the official show notes page there. I also encourage you to explore all of the other terrific indie science fiction and fantasy online short films, web series, and other closely related media that we have curated and collected on the site. I also need to ask you to visit our support section because without the support of kind and generous listeners like you, we will not be able to keep the lights on here at Ion Sci-Fi and over at The Seventh Matrix, and we appreciate that. Please leave us a review and rating wherever you get your podcast, and we appreciate that a great deal as well. 
Okay, that's it for this episode, everyone. Thank you again for listening. And until the 7th Matrix portal reopens, stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, take a break, escape the mundane, and enter the fantastic. Take care.